Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So this week we're going to be improving some of the heart movement code. A lot of you have been asking for an adjustable jump. A jump where if you hold the button down for a long time you'll get a big jump and if you only tap the button you'll get a small jump. So in order to do that we're going to go to our attack sprite and we're going to make some changes just so we've got a nice way of testing our jump. Now I'm just going to go through and get all of this code underneath when green flag clicked if mode equals evade. Now this is only temporary of course but I've just got some gravity slams here that will take us in a few different directions a nice long wait of eight seconds so we've got enough time to test our new movement. So once we're done with that head across to your heart sprite this is where we're going to be doing most of our code today and look around until you find your define jump button code. So first we're going to take one of our variables and we're going to repurpose it. Our jumps variable keeps track of how many jumps we're allowed to do in midair before we recharge them by hitting the ground, by landing after a fall. Now I'm going to rename this variable so it's clear it's going to do something slightly different. If you have double jumps in your game you could create a new variable and use it for the code that we're about to do but I'm going to rename jumps into jumping. Now the variable is going to keep track of at what stage in our jump are we and how long are our jumps allowed to be. So in our code here we've got set jumping to 1. We need to change that to set jumping to 0. The number 0 is going to mean that we are allowed to jump but we are not yet jumping. Then look to the bottom until you find this if key button pressed. We're going to drag that out of this if jumping more than zero. We're going to pull that off to the side, make sure that this set rotation style goes back here. And then we're going to go to control, get out an if then and put it inside our if key button pressed. And in there we're going to put if jumping equals zero. Remember, if jumping equals zero, that means we are not currently jumping and we are allowed to jump. Then change this minus one into a one. So now, instead of taking away from our jumps variable, we're going to increase our jumping variable to keep track of how long we've been holding the button down for and how big our jump is going to be. Now we're going to take this if jumping more than zero and move it right underneath here. If our jumping variable is more than zero, that means we're part way through a jump. So just copy this set velocity to 10 and change jumping by one and put it in here. So let's give that a test and see what it looks like. Okay, so if I do a little press on the keyboard, I have a little jump. And if I press and hold, I've got quite a big jump. That's good, the problem is, is that I have an infinite number of jumps in the air and I can just keep jumping in midair, basically fly. Tick your jumping variable so that you can see this number and let's see what it's doing when we're doing our jump. So watch, it goes up the more that we jump. So if we have a cutoff point, a certain number at which the jump stops working, that will prevent us from just infinitely jumping like we're doing now. So remember, if jumping equals zero is the code that starts our jump, but if jumping is more than zero is the code that works when we're partway through our jump. So all we need to do is go to operators, get out an and, get our jumping more than, put that there, move this all the way back into the if, and then we need to decide at what point should the jump stop working. To do that, all we need to do is put in a jumping less than. And by changing this number, I'm gonna say nine is a good place to start. If you make this number larger, then you'll be able to have longer jumps. And if you make this number smaller, then you'll have smaller jumps. So let's give it a test, shall we? Okay, so a little jump, but if I press and hold, then I have a much larger jump. And it's not infinite though. If I press and hold and I keep pressing, I still fall back down. Now, there is one little problem though. I can still do these kind of double jumps. However, there is a nice and easy way to fix that. 
Now our velocity variable is the variable that keeps track of our speed in terms of jumping and falling. And when our velocity is at 10, that's what makes us jump. Now the velocity is constantly having numbers taken away from it, which is what makes us fall again. Now, as long as this code checks to make sure that our velocity is close to 10, then it should prevent us from doing those weird little double jumps we were able to do. So go to control, get out an if, and just put it around here. Now we could add another and here, but it just makes the code a little bit long. So I'm just happy to put it right here. We want to make sure that our velocity is more than eight. That means it'll be nine or 10, which should be close enough. Now let's see if we're still able to do those double jumps. Okay, so I can do a big jump, but if I try and do a double jump, it doesn't work. Excellent, well, problem solved. Now, while we're fixing things in our jump code, there is one other problem that I've been wanting to fix for a little while. You might have already noticed it. Can you see what happens just before the heart lands? It sort of does this strange pause. Can you see that just there? It just sort of falls, and there's this sort of odd little gap sometimes, like it's hitting a cushion, or it's bouncing something that makes it sort of stop falling and then fall the rest of the way. Now this is actually because of this code here, move minus velocity steps, which is very similar to our movement code for our red heart. Now that movement code is fine. The heart's always moving the same speed when we do movement. And then when it moves into the box, it moves back out again, no gap, or at least only a very small gap. However, velocity doesn't stay the same. It's always accelerating because of the gravity, which means it speeds up, which means that this velocity number here is quite a large number by the time that the blue heart hits the box, which means that it moves this big distance and then it moves out of that distance again and it's created this gap. Thankfully, there's a nice and easy way to fix this. Underneath if touching box, take all of this code out for now, and then in that gap, we're going to put in an if then else. Now this set to velocity to zero is what stops us from moving once we've touched the box, so that's fine, we're gonna put that right in there. We want that to happen no matter what. This velocity less than zero, put that in there. Then get this set jumping to zero and put it here. Now, if our velocity is less than zero, so under the if, that's what happens when our heart falls to the ground because it's moving down. Otherwise, that means our heart has somehow managed to jump so high, it's hit the ceiling. We don't want to recharge the jump if that happens. Now, we don't need any of this code anymore. We're going to throw that away and we're going to create a new my block. We're going to call this my block fix jump gap. Add an input, call this input amount, and then click on run without screen refresh and press OK. Drag this somewhere where you've got some space underneath it, and then we're going to put into it a repeat until not touching box. Then go to motion and get out a move 10 steps but we're going to move amount steps. Now go back to my blocks, and we want to put in a fix jump gap here and a fix jump gap here. Now, the way that we handle the falling and jumping is we use move blocks to make it work. And we've made it so that if we move by a negative number, we're falling. And if you move by a positive number, we're jumping or rising. So this code here is what happens once we've fallen into the box and we need to make sure that we rise up out of the box to make sure we don't get stuck inside it. So we want to change this number by one. We want to move one step, slowly rising out of the box, pixel by pixel, and it will happen until we are no longer touching the box. Then this one here, what happens if the heart manages to hit the ceiling, we want to move this by negative one. Again, pixel by pixel, it'll make sure that we don't get stuck in the ceiling of the box if we jump too high. Okay, let's give it a test and see if it works, shall we? Okay, and we don't have that weird gap anymore. We don't have that weird pause when it falls and reaches the bottom. Excellent, problem solved.
So now that we've got this cool improved jumping physics, let's tie some of these magic numbers, these numbers that we've just made up, into variables so that if we want to in the future, we can change the physics nice and easily. We can adjust the gravity, do all sorts of cool things. So this line here, change velocity by minus 0.8, that's our gravity. So let's make a new variable and let's call it gravity. I'm gonna make it for this sprite only, press OK. Now grab your gravity variable and just put it here. And now, when we later on set our gravity at the beginning of the game, we can decide how strong we want our gravity to be. I'm actually going to take this opportunity to make the gravity a bit stronger. I'm going to say minus 1.2. Next, we've got these set velocity to 10, and that's how strong our jump is. So we can create a new variable. Again, I'm going to make it for this sprite only, and I'm going to call this jump power. Press OK. Now we can move our jump power into there and into there. I'm going to keep the jump power as 10 for now. So set jump power to 10. Now this number here, 9, this is our jump duration. So let's create a new variable called jump duration for this sprite only and press OK and get our jump duration and put it over that nine right there. And I'm going to set jump duration to nine at the beginning of the game. Now while we're at it, there's two variables that we really should set to a default number at the beginning of the game. One of those is velocity. Let's set the velocity to zero at the beginning of the game. And the other one is jumping. Now we could say that our jumping variable can start off at zero, which means that we can jump. But that might mean that if our heart is in the middle of the box, when the game starts, we'll actually be able to jump in midair. So I'm going to set the jumping to minus one, meaning that we are not allowed to jump. Remember, once we fall to the ground, it will set it back to zero, which will make it so that we can jump again. So don't worry. Now all of these set variables, we just need to put them underneath our when green flag clicked code. You can make a new one if you want, but I'm happy just to use the one we already have. And now feel free to change these numbers, uh, especially these top three here. Try changing the gravity higher or lower, try changing your jump power and jump duration, and see what kind of jump you want your Undertale game to have. Hello, this is Jonathan from the future. So one thing that I forgot to mention before was in your define jump button, look down until you find if velocity more than eight. Now remember, this is the code that prevents you from making those little double jumps. It checks your velocity and it will not let you continue a jump if you have already begun to fall. So what we need to do is we need to replace this eight with another number that is slightly lower than your jump power. So we're going to go to operators, get out a minus operator, put it over that eight, then get out our jump power. Now we could take away two, but it should also work if we take away 1.5. Give it a test to make sure it works correctly. Otherwise replace this 1.5 with a two and see if that works better. And aside from that, I shall return you to Jonathan from the past. And now this has made me think of something else people have been asking. When we do our gravity slam attack, the heart often will just sort of hover there and slowly fall, where most people want it to really be slammed down into the ground with a lot of force. And there's a nice easy way of doing this. If you look around for your when I receive blue soul, Underneath that code, we can set our velocity and set our jumping variables. So we can make sure that we set jumping to minus one to make sure that we cannot jump. And we can set the velocity to however fast we want to be falling straight away when the blue soul attack hits. I'm gonna say minus seven. I think that's going to work really well. If you want, you could even tie this here to a variable, call it gravity slam strength. Let's have a quick look and see what it looks like Okay, so this first gravity slam's about to hit, and let's see what happens to our blue heart. It gets thrown down with quite a lot of force, whereas before it just kind of hovered and slowly fell. 
So this is what it looks like with the new physics with the slightly higher gravity. And I'm really happy with that. We've got nice little jumps and some big jumps as well. So now that we've fixed the gap with our jump code, it reminded me, some of us may also have problems with a gap in our normal movement code. Now this might not be obvious to all of you, especially if your movement speed is like mine. So I've upped the movement speed of the heart from five to 10 and watch what happens when we get close on the left and right now. Yeah, you can see there's quite a gap there now. So this may or may not be as noticeable in your project, depending on the size of your heart and the speed at which it moves. But this next piece of code should be able to fix any gap and just make your game just look a little bit more precise. So look around until you can find your define move x y code. So underneath if touching box, this is the collision that we're using right now, which is causing the gap problem. So we're going to make some more sophisticated collision, very similar to what we did with our fix jump gap code. So go to my blocks, so make a new block and call it collision x y and then give it two inputs, the first one called x and the second one called Y. Make sure you tick this run without screen refresh and then press OK. Let's move this define collision down a little bit and then let's put in a collision X, Y. We want to move this X from the move X and this Y down into our collision X, Y. So underneath your define collision, we need an if then. We're first going to make sure that we're fixing the x collision by putting in a not x equal nothing. Now that means that this code will only run if x is something. So if we have x movement, then we will run our x collision code. Next thing we need to figure out is what direction is our x movement. So we need an if then else and a x greater than zero. So if this is true, that means our X movement is right. Otherwise, our X movement is left. So if we're moving right into the box, we need to move out of the box pixel by pixel. So go to control, get out a repeat until not touching box. We want to change the X by minus one. That will move us left pixel by pixel until we are no longer stuck inside the box. Now to do the reverse is nice and easy. Just copy this repeat until, but change the minus one into a one. And that's our X collision code working. Underneath it, we need to do our Y collision code and we can copy most of this. So just copy this if not, take out the X's and replace them with Y's. Then we need to put in change y instead of change x. So get out a change y by minus one and then change y by one underneath it. And let's give it a test. And now we don't have those gaps anymore. And this will also fix any gaps you might experience during red soul mode as well. So that's everything for this week. I hope this has shown you that even once you've coded something and it's working but it has little problems, you can always go back and find better ways of doing things and ways of making improvements. Subscribe and ring the bell to see the next episode. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help with your code. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time ninjas.